Alright folks, what is up? This is One Big Bug and I'm coming at you Euro Truck Simulator 2, looking at the high-end trucks. Now, <clears throat> a couple things I have to go over before we get into the truck that uh, we're going to be driving in this series of videos. Number one, I have a new uh, recording software, uh, Bandicam. It's in beta. Uh, it's supposed to be better than Fraps. I used it to record my first Binding of Isaac video in a while. Worked really well. I'm going to try and stick with it, see how it does. Maybe I can get rid of fraps. Uh, number two, I'm going to revisit the Iveco and DAF after we go through the rest of the trucks because I'm going to be doing standard transmission. Um, it's going to take some getting used to. I've changed my uh, settings around and I've played around with them a little bit but I'm definitely not accustomed to it so I've got to get used to that but in order to be fair to the Iveco and the DAF I'm going to go back to them and go over standard as well as I've made a decision if a truck shows if a truck company shows that their truck has a 6x4 setup then I'm going to upgrade the chassis to 6x4 so that way we have the best possible truck that the um, that can offer in terms of what I know um, is not you know added on from like one of my mods and you can tell just by looking at the dealership if they have the multi-wheel chassis so I get, gotta go back to the Iveco and do that I don't know if the DAF has an upgradable chassis like that but I know that the Iveco does so that warrants me going back to them so these are the things I'm going to be doing um, after we finish and a few changes that I've decided to make just to be fair to all the trucks. I'm not going to go back and do all the beginner trucks with standard. I'm just not. I think that would be too much. Um, but we're going to do this is what we're going to do. So this is the truck we're looking at and I've kind of secretly been uh, waiting to go over this truck. Um, Mercedes-Benz Actros MP3 Megaspace. Uh, no, we don't want company manager. We want truck dealership. That's what we want. Um, we want buy online. And here. So this is the truck, but as you can see here, it has a 6x4 chassis. So we're going to upgrade the chassis uh, to 6x4. And we have an Actros MP3 6x2-4, which we're going to change. Mega Space, left-handed steering, 598 horsepower engine. That's actually a pretty big uh, engine considering um, where it starts from. And uh, our engine torque is 2,800 newton meters at 1,080 RPM. Uh, I kind of had a little bit of a discussion with a guy on Reddit that the lowest end, highest end... Um, RPM is where the torque is in terms of a power band. Now, um, this is supposed to be true, but I find that even if the power band is supposed to be in there, its strongest new, uh, you know torque is supposed to be within that band, I find that, at least in the game, it just doesn't seem to translate to that very well. You know? And... Like, you saw the, the Iveco, at least in, uh, with automatic, had trouble climbing hills hauling just a 21-ton load. But, again, to be fair, we got, we got to go back to the standard and see what else we can pull out. And, actually, this is not, in truth, the most expensive truck. The most expensive truck is this one. The Actros MP3 4x2 megaspace left-handed. But, as you can see, everything's the same. It doesn't have the extended chassis. It's just because you have everything that this truck does, and you have, like, side skirts. You have a little bit more fanciness to it. But I've already gone over, and uh, the same way, we have 400, 440 kilowatts. And I've already looked back and forth. They're the same. They even got the same PowerShift G281R transmission. Although, when you upgrade to the 6x4 chassis, you actually get more fuel. You get 600 liters versus 400 liters. So that's uh, really cool as well. So let's go to drive. And we're going to load up here. Now I've going, I'm learning 
this um, um, this new recording software. And actually, give me one second. I'm trying to bring my mic level down a little bit more. All right, so let's upgrade the truck real quick. And that's this chassis right here, the 6x4 megaspace. Now, look at how long that chassis is in comparison. Look look at the difference, you know? look. At, actually, this is a long chassis for a starter truck the basic uh, 4x2 chassis, but look how long this chassis is. And a long chassis does help with stability. So this helps make the Mercedes an actually very stable truck uh, in every respect of the word. You know, there's no reason um, that this truck shouldn't be, you know, fairly stable. So that's really nice, that extra long chassis. It's actually, like I said, it's the longest chassis of any truck unmodded vanilla game. You know what? Why don't we give it a cool paint job? Paint jobs don't matter. There we go. How's that for a paint job? That looks like a good paint job to me. I forgot I had this paint job in here. I just sort of remembered it. There we go. There's our truck. I should do that with the Iveco and, and whatnot. Give him a different paint job at least. Don't know why I'm looking outside the truck, but okay. Now, before we go looking for a load, let's take a look um, at the truck itself. Let's get rid of that for now. Now, first off, the mirrors are placed okay. Now, I don't have a head tracking system, so it doesn't help in terms of turning and whatnot. And despite how cheap it can be, um, I don't really have the money to set up a rig. So this, and, and a lot of people don't have the money to set up the rig, and a lot of people don't take the game as seriously as some of us do uh, to want to set up a rig. You know, they just use the controller like I do. So the mirrors are actually a concern. So the mirrors, um, they do take up a lot of space, and they do block a fair amount of view, but it's not too bad. And the mirrors are nice and big, which I really like. You get a nice, big, clear view of your side. They're not small. There's no door bar to block extra vision or to make more problems. Um, however, even though your front view mirror is set off to the side over here, so it's out of the way, you have that GPS stuck right in the middle of the windshield, which can be a distraction and does cause a little bit of view blocking. So, for somebody like me who drives trucks with a very clear open windshield, that's actually a little bit distracting and can actually be a pain. Plus, as you see, the dashboard is actually built with a nice big hump in it, just the way it is. Seems a little bit off and actually narrows down the view that you have right in front of you. It's nothing bad, but it's something that I notice because this isn't the truck I usually drive. So, again, the view can be a little... If you're okay with it, I prefer personally a little bit more of an open view, but it's minor nitpicks, honestly. There's nothing major about this truck that's bad. <laughs> right. So let's fire this up. Take our parking brake off. And let's see if we can do this without killing anybody. Actually, we need to find a load first. So let's hit the brakes. And parking brake. And job market. <clears throat> Alright, we get 25 tons of packed glass. That goes over a very... Uh, I don't think we've been there. We've been here. We've been to Tripoli. We, I think we've been way over here. And we've been up in this area. Have we been... No, we haven't. We haven't been to... Athenia. So packed glass at 25 tons would actually be pretty good. That would actually be pretty good. Uh, we could do 72 tons. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not right now. Um, another 25 ton container. I don't... 
I don't know. What about this 35 tons? That's a long distance. It's over a thousand kilometers. I was just kind of hoping to go in a different direction is all. You know, I don't like the... I, I'm looking for a nice, tough road to haul, and there's really not. So we're either stuck with um, this one, because that's like a nice, tough road, and we haven't been here. We haven't been through this area here. So that would be nice. Or... Um, we go with the packed glass, and we go this way, because we haven't been to there yet, either. You know, let, let's, let's challenge this. Let's go with the Kessel Wagon. Why not? Um... Right, drive. I, was, I have toyed around with this a little bit, but I'm still not overly familiar with it. Am I recording is the question. Yes, I am. I will say I feel more comfortable um, driving with the standard. Turn my volume down a little bit. Get a little loud. I probably should shift, shift sooner. Like I said it's not something I'm used to doing. And even though I've always wanted to be a, a, a truck driver, I never was a truck driver. I drove buses, coaches, which are all automatic transmission. So, yeah, I'm, the, the, you know, I'm not familiar with where trucks should shift. <laughs> Now, this goes really well when running um, Bobtail. There's no doubt about that. Just 12th gear, we run up the hill, no problem, gaining speed. Yeah. Running Bobtail, man, you can cruise. Of course, you can say that in pretty much any uh, empty truck, any Bobtail truck. You can just run and not worry. Now, one thing I know about going to 35 tons, regardless of what chassis you have, and this is the hard lesson I learned when hauling 35, you know, 40 tons on my Scania. Um, you really have to respect the highway corners a lot more. The corners that you'd normally take with a normal 25 ton load, say like this one, you know, at speed, um, like this end portion here can really just flip you as a uh, 35 ton load. Plenty of braking when MDL say that much. I shouldn't have been going that fast to be honest. But I said things I'm getting used to. Come on, light. Oh, thanks for blocking my view there, Geronimo. Much appreciated.
here we go. Take the job and let's hope for the best, shall we? Need our mirrors. We can see a little bit better. Yeah, sometimes you see me sitting there not moving. It's because, uh, especially when backing up, it's, I'm hitting for simple automatic. And that's not really what I need to be doing. Um, we'll, we'll do first. I'm going to take it out of here nice and slow. You're going to give me red light. That's so mean of you. I could do my usual, but I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, we're going to downshift. So this is what we look like right now. Pretty sweet, huh? So, so far, so good. It's got a nice uh, s start on the haul. Considering how much weight we're carrying. Uh, I'm really hoping that this... Um, this bandy... Uh, bandy cam... Really works out. I just used it to record Binding of Isaac. And it did really, really well. So, I'm at least going to use it for that because um, using it for anything else, I mean, using anything else to record Binding of Isaac, number one, you really can't do it with fraps unless it, you tell it to record your desktop, and then even then you have to do it in window mode, so you end up recording your desktop as well. And Camtasia, every time I tell it to record the screen, um, we're just going to hold RPM here because we're coming up. Try and hold a little speed for going up this corner. About 10 kilometers extra. Wrong gear. But despite shifting to the wrong gear, it did really well. Take it easy. Because the last thing we need to do is... Um, start clipping stuff. I don't want to do that. Now, one one uh, issue I have with the um, Mercedes is uh, like I have with the DAF and even the Iveco to some degree is the dashboard. You know, it, it's mostly dial and it's not very, you know, you can read it but it's not very intricate. You know, and you lack a digital display uh, for like speed and whatnot. See, like this corner here, taking this corner too hard will flip you. And it doesn't take much to get up to the, a speed that's too hard. And the dash display, you have your fuel with leftover kilometers. You have your temperature, which does nothing. And then you have a thermostat with um, that's our cruise control set. So, it's not as good as other dashboard displays. Um, I just really don't think it works that well. Again, not terrible. I've seen a lot worse. But one thing the Mercedes does seem to suffer from is uh, vision issues. And they're minor, they're minor vision issues, but they're still issues. And they're something that 
can truly distract um, if you're not used to it. So it will take a little getting used to. I was just kind of coasting there and uh, my wife needed to turn on the light so I got a little distracted. But that's right. We're going to keep on the high RPM here just because we need to slow down for this corner. Last thing I want to do is like pull the over on this corner. Good. Very good. I do let the RPM build up, and in all the one day I shouldn't. Because the Mercedes does benefit from staying in the lower RPM bandwidth. Um, I just really think it works out uh, really well if you keep it in the low RPM uh, much better. It's, it's deceptively strong. Like I said, even with a 320 um, horsepower engine to start, it hauled really, really well. And there was nothing... I, I, I really enjoy driving it. I enjoy the sound of it. I enjoy the look of the truck. And I enjoy the way it hauls. It does really, really well. When I trade it for my Scania? No. Well, that's only because I'm used to the Scania. You know, I've mentioned before that if it were just me... Um, I mean, if I had stuck with um, this truck to start with... I would have been staying with Mercedes, but I went. I went to like Scania, and I stayed Scania. I'm Scania dedicated. Uh, pretty much end of story there. So we're on a bit of an incline. It looks like not a big one, and of course we have our favorite thing coming up. Sorry, I'm going to cut you off. So we're going to start slowing down. Man, that that GPS there is just really annoying. And there. I'd be in, I'm interested to see if the sound comes out okay. That's something I'm really interested in seeing what happens. If the sound breaks up, if the sound goes um, late without uh, pause breaks, like I did with Fraps. And see if this deals with that issue or not. Because again, it was a recording issue. It was not a... Um, it's not a... Uh, A rendering issue because I tried it through Sony Vegas Pro and the same thing ended up happening. Now if it happens in Sony Vegas and Camtasia, it's not a rendering issue. So again, despite a slight incline, we're actually doing really well and putting in some extra speed on and we're just hitting a level out right at about this point. So handling this haul really well, I'm really impressed with what the uh, Mercedes is doing here. It, it's, it's hauling really well. Uh, in every respect, just like just like the beginner truck, you know, it's surprising. You know, I've heard a lot of people uh, badmouth the Mercedes, and I don't know why. I really don't see anything wrong with it. You know, they say the engine's poor, the engine's weak. Uh, maybe before they updated, I guess it could have been, but you know, it's almost a 600 horsepower engine. How can you go wrong? <clears throat> you know, 2300 newton meters at 1080 RPM. That's rather impressive for any truck. A little bit of a climb here. And she handles it like a champ. I really want to get off this wall. I want 
want to get back into my center lane. Now I know that my microphone picks up like my controller noises and whatnot. I actually have my microphone sensitivity turned down as low as I can. And I have my microphone level turned down pretty low on two counts, both on my controller box and I have it down to about 60% in Windows and I, it's still pretty sensitive. I may end up turning it down further. Uh, I'm not sure, but we'll see. And I'm really interested to see how the audio is. So once we hit our first, um, once we hit our first rest point, I'll, um, you know, where I'm going to stop the video before I record any more, I'm going to go back and check. And look, look at that. Look, look, look at how well she handled that hill. Just dropped her from 12th to 10th and just let her run. And we topped that hill at uh, uh, you know, low 50s, low mid 50s right there, I think, right? That's impressive work for a truck. Especially home 35 tons, man. That's a heavy load. I don't want to compare it too much to the Iveco and the uh, and the DAF because again I got to go back and redo those as standards. You know, I, I just really do. I really like the sound that the truck makes you. Let's listen to the engine, it's almost like a growl. She's growling herself along the road. Be careful. Building up. When hauling this load, I'm bringing my speed limit um, back down. Really, no more than 100. Alright, I, I gotta get over because somebody's gonna pull out in front of me. Yeah, there you go. Saw that happening. Alright, careful. Don't want to hit these too fast. I'm just letting her coast the hill right now. Not building up too much speed. And then just throttle it up the hill here, which... It's really hauling it really well. There's not losing much at all in terms of uh, you know speed. All right, back on the downhill, we'll let her coast it. Probably should have hit the throttle sooner there, but it's fine. Drop it down to 11. Getting a little more comfortable with the controls. Losing speed, but not very quickly. Tenth. We're hitting the steep part of the climb. that. Look at that. 40 miles, 40 kilometers per hour, 10th gear, crest the hill. And now she's uh, speeding back up really well. So that's impressive right there. It was fun recording Binding of Isaac to some degree, except that from the first top five times I attempted to record the, an episode, the first episode in a while, um, something happened that would stop the recording. Um, I had a Steam update pop up, said, hey, you, up, you want to update Steam now? That ruined the recording. I had um, a Windows update pop up come in. 
and say, hey, you need to restart your computer because we need to install an update. That ruined my recording. Had the power flicker, which turned my computer off in the middle of one. Uh, there was one point I thought I started the recording, but actually didn't. Um, I accidentally stopped the recording by double tapping the button. That kind of ticked me off. All right, we're going too fast. So we're going to let it coast the hill and slow down. I don't want to build up too much speed, just to be honest with you. We're hauling 35 tons, and I learned my lesson on my Scania uh, hauling 40 tons. And this does not have the Scania chassis on it. So, like, hitting this corner at this speed could, be, could very well be dangerous, even though it's a gentle corner. It's starting to get dark out, too. I forgot to adjust my rain gauge. So I encounter rain a little bit more often. Um, my lights. My lights. That's high beams. Oh yeah, that's right. There they are. I've switched some of my controls around so it's like I forget where everything is. I do not have cruise control set, I just don't have the gas pressed all the way down, so I'm not gaining speed at a great rate. I'm just uh, you know, holding steady, which uh, is actually really cool. Right, sharp corner, so we got to be careful. I don't want her to tip. have got to get over. Now we really got to slow down because this is going to be a pretty sharp corner. Throttle in eighth gear. A little too low. Sixth gear. There we go. try and make the ferry as my first rest stop. And then break up the episodes from there. Alright, there's no vehicles in that lane, so I don't need to move over. I don't need to worry about anyone pulling out in front of me. I find it interesting, the choice of delivering a train car to like somewhere in Africa because think about it wouldn't you just hook it up to a train drive it to the coast on a, tra on a train train track and then from the train track just load it on a boat hook it up to another train and then complete the delivery using the train I'm trying to be really gentle on that corner because I have a little bit of speed built up got enough speed going on that we can keep her in 12th I don't know. It's a fun haul either way. It's an interesting cargo with a nice trailer. So why complain, right? Yeah, I would have had no problem making Mercedes my truck if I had stuck with it. Of course, when the game first came out, it was not called Mercedes. It was called Majestic. And I don't know why. I guess maybe they couldn't get the proper licensing for Mercedes, so they couldn't use Mercedes. I'm not sure, or what did, or were Mercedes trucks called Majestics, you know? 
I'm not in Europe. I don't know. So maybe if somebody sees that and hears this part, they can answer it. If um, Mercedes, you know, why they were called the Majestic um, when the game first came out. Was it a licensing issue? Was it um, just what the truck was actually called and now they just decided to call it Mercedes? What's the whole deal behind that? Properly. I'm going to set the cruise control for 100 kilometers. 10 kilometers less than what I normally do, 10 kilometers more than what um, is. Or at least used to be the game's limit. It used to have a 90 kilometer speed limit, but you can disable that now so you can go, of course, max speed with the truck, which most people do. They disable it. <coughs> when hauling normal loads, it's fine, but when hauling big heavy loads, um, it's better just to be cautious. You know, just, just be cautious about it. It's not quite dark enough to truly judge yet, but the dashboard light up, the display in the center there, is looking a little bit dim. And I have the light set up to be uh, fully lit up. Uh, you know, I, I don't have the dimmer set to be down any further. So I'm not sure why it is the way it is. But it is. Hauling quite well, though. I've been really impressed with uh, just everything. You know, I'm getting comfortable with the view now. I'm getting comfortable with the mirrors. I'm starting to unconsciously fade out the GPS uh, on the windshield. And I'm getting comfortable with how she handles. And this is really becoming an enjoyable drive. You know, I wish I had handled my Scania this way when I hauled the 40 tons. We shall improve. We shall do better. When we haul the next heavy haul load, uh, I will take everything I learned, positive and negative, and apply it, as you can see, like I'm already doing here. Yeah, we don't want her. We don't want her rolling. I find that usually around 80. Uh, see there, 80 kilometers. Um, on most uh, standard turns on highways that are a little steep will help. Now you can tell how well a truck's going to handle a load just by its tilt when you turn, how hard it tilts. And as you, you can see as I turn, it's tilting pretty hard, left and right. It's got a pretty significant tilt on it. That means that the suspension's uh, maxing out uh, really quick uh, with the 35 ton load. But that's to be expected because this game wasn't designed, you know, the vanilla trucks weren't designed with 35 tons of mine. They were designed with uh, 25 tons being the heaviest load. So if you were hauling 25 tons on this truck, it would be really easy. It'd be really simple. I gotta buy another garage. I don't have enough room and I need, I still need to buy uh, the MAN, the Scania, and the Volvo trucks. Just 
impressive. Again, we're going to have to really slow it down. This is going to be a fairly sharp corner. And we got to watch our trailer. Make sure we have enough room. Beautiful turn, beautiful. I'm gonna stance up in the middle of this lane just so it gets um, shifting the wrong way again. Just so it gets a little easier to make this corner here. Really nice. Really well done there. And I don't mean my driving, I mean the truck performed really, really well. Looks like we're almost to our ferry point. Down gear, boy, down gear. Again, I just don't feel like that's going over the bump correctly, if I'm going to be honest with you. shouldn't be lifting the cab like that, but I could be wrong. Alright, I'm going to swing wide, bring her around. Hey, see how hard she tipped right there? That's just letting you know, hey, you know, you got something heavy on your back, be careful. lights at us like okay go ahead then pulls out in front of us God, what is with these this traffic every time I'm hauling something wacky freaking happens did I accidentally flash my lights I might have because I think I tapped that well again it's like I said I'm getting used to the controls why are you guys going when I have the green light?
climb here? I just look. She's just actually gaining speed on it. How strong that is. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We're all familiar with this on off, aren't we? God, why do you have the concrete barriers here? Keep it straight. I think we'll just clear. Of course, now we have to make this corner. Because, fuck logic. I don't think this can make it. I don't know if this can make it. Probably gonna wipe out your sign. And I'm gonna take it down the first. I think. Call her through. We're making some headway, I think. Just as long as we're not damaging the load. Come on. Look at that. There we go. And there we are. Alright, folks, that's going to be me done for this particular part of the episode. Join us next when we continue on with our Mercedes um, high-end truck, our uh, mega space. Until then, this is One Big Bugger signing out. Please leave a comment, rate, and subscribe if you would. Until the next time, folks, I'll see you then.